Well, good morning together, and um, I must thank again for the invitation uh, to this uh, very important food summit. Uh, and also for me, it's an honor to be here, thank you. Um, let me briefly introduce my company and myself, not for advertising, but just telling you what, what we do. Uh, Aramark, my... Um, that presentation is better than mine, so... <laughs> Okay, um, Aramark uh, is in the food service business uh, and uh, we do that for business dining, sport arenas, fairs, hospitals, old age homes, schools, universities and even prisons uh, with uh, more than 270,000 uh, employees uh, that deliver their work uh, in 21 uh, countries and especially uh, the chefs and the people who work in the kitchen tell me what to do, which is uh, very close to daily business. And you can imagine we have uh, people uh, of, with blue colors, people, workers who eat with us, and we have sizes of units that are from 100 meals a day to 12,000 meals a day. So um, I'm responsible for this uh, since 2000. And, um, the, the subject we are talking about today is how can safety be ensured and live up to the urban consumer growing need for culinary quality food. For me, this seems to be the quadrature of the circle. Mm -hmm. Nearly impossible, but uh, it is rightly expected that better food for more people is safe, culinary and affordable. That is my job to have this done. So, there are two ways to get there. Possibly we get to the next page. Oh, is that me? Yeah. There we are. We have uh, two ways to get there. Red, reactive, and a green, proactive, in the way of a traffic light. The one way, reactive, means the red light, the stop, means we manage efficiently, do the essential things right, techniques to manage risks, and avoid risks, law breaches, and high costs. The other way, proactive, the green light go, means we manage effective and do the right things with efficient consumer response. Here we create, and not react, offers the consumers expect and deliver when she or he wants us to do so exactly in time. But fundamental changes will, will only happen if we all work as one community. Therefore, we need collective activities, the yellow right, light, get ready, together with politics, organizations, such as uh, industry associations, NGOs, the entire economy, alli alliances, like Fred described, uh, independent groups, of small, middle-sized companies and agree to market standards in production, traceability, certifications and alternative agricultural production like vertical farming, aquaponics, via regional food hubs. So the risk we have, oh, it's me working. The risk we have go along the whole supply chain and what we're doing today is working preventive and uh, the risk reacting instead of doing proactive approach. So we can only manage in a collective way from farm to table. So the risk, what are the risks? A lot of them have been talked about today already. Globalization brings differences in trade regulations, foodborne pathogens, cybersecurity, threats from malware and hackers, very extremely important or di difficult security threats, increasing terrorism. This uh, even goes into stocks and the supply chain. Food fraud, substitution with cheaper alternatives that are unfit for consumption. Personal threat. And the thing is, um, you, uh, you have employees in your units. You have to check them, double check them three times, although you trust them and risk of high costs. I think that's another subject 
but uh, looking at uh, growing population and uh, land grabbing of investors, etc., that will come up in the next 10 years. And the distances out of town into town. So um, I will not be able to explain all these techniques uh, to manage today. Uh, the most of you are experts and know all these. But the techniques we execute are multifarious and from controlling, avoiding, preventing, up to reacting when something has already happened. This is not changing the basic causes in our food industry. So, well, the green light here, the proactive thing I was um, thinking about is the efficient consumer response. This is indeed a successful method in retail and the fast-moving consumer goods industry. It is now coming to the food service industry very rapidly. The intention is quite simple. Get the right foods to the right time, at the right time, to the right place, to the right price. With elements of category management, means marketing, and supply chain management, with, let's say, an efficient assortment efficient promotion, efficient product introduction on the one side, and efficient replenishment means the way to the customer. This could get rid of risks of slow movers, short shelf lives, and redundant processes with a positive motivation for all individuals, simply by doing better business and having a well-accepted offer of goods. Well, as a supply chain manager, it's not my job uh, to do promotion. <laughs> Therefore, we have experts in marketing. But what I know is that we have to closely work together to avoid redundant and inefficient deliveries with product waste and frustration for all. Promotion can be modern and in time with megatrends, for example, regional, vegetarian, healthy, progressive, street food, the newest thing and food trucks which could, which could even solve the, trans, the transportation problem. Sustainable sourced and welfare, MSC, ASC, social projects like Fred's for example. Seasonal uh, media supported and with certifications. Why not talk about them? Um, to listen to your customer is a quite difficult thing. To get to customer insight is nearly impossible. Is the information we get from interdependent data the positive side of the buzzword big data? As medias deliver efficient data to sort out what customers want, officials hopefully will find a way how this big data could be used without endangering personal rights. We will get a interdependence from the recipe to the point of sale, sales boards, uh, which is also needed to avoid law breach. If we think of the newest regulation with the declaration of allergies uh, in the restaurants, which is even uh, to be done, this is a living example. Then the point of sales equipment has to fit to your customer in the city and to your shop, and to the level of convenience, from fresh to ready to cook, or even to ready to serve. This here is very nearly close to Fred's project here. Uh, this is an example that shows how efficient promotion of farmers and efficient replenishment as a mix lead to a very clean supply chain product advertising of individual farmers based on a seasonal calendar in the region in our individual restaurants enabled an ordering in advance and solid contracts with the farmers. With this, we were able to control this, the complete supply chain from order to pay. So, it sounds easy, but a procurement strategy should be bespoken with all participants in the whole supply chain, with the farmers, manufacturers, vendors, 
and logistic partners. You should also have a, set up a code of conduct that every participant is aware of. It doesn't make sense just having it written on paper and not communicated it with everybody. You should have a strategy for the fruit production and general supplier management with specs, recipes, menu planning, ordering, waste review and recycling. A supplier management down the supply chain is needed with everybody. In these days, the uh, IT chain with e-procurement from order to, pay, order to pay should be normal daily business. Responsibilities in the stock ownerships have to be clarified before the start of business. And last but not least, in this point, the size of fleet and equipment must fit to use and be flexible and in every case temperature controlled. And I even mean this when the pizza man comes to your house, that this is controlled. And it's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. So uh, efficient replenishment starts with knowing the products, exact specs, sticking to the recipes. You know how difficult it is when you cook at home. Do you stick to recipes? No, you don't. Yeah. And if you cook for 12,000 people and you don't stick to recipes, you have a cost problem and a problem at all. With that, you have a, a good menu planning, order quantities, and an efficient process from order to delivery. This leads to less waste and lower costs and higher sustainability. The avoidable leftover is recycled to fuel or given to poor. These processes have to be trained so that they happen automatically, unconscious. Uh, the, the simple method of making waste visible, as you see here, and controlled, reduced waste in our company by 20%. Very simple, just showing my colleague and waiting it, waiting what I have lost in that day. For this effort, we got a prize. Quite proud of. <laughs> Okay, now we get to uh, the yellow uh, light. I'm nearly finished, so don't worry. Lise, nearly finished. Um, I think the measures for fundamental changes are in agreeing on collective uh, standards in production, in traceability, in IT chain, and here, just to name a few uh, examples in production, is ISO certification, bio certification, MSC, IFS, etc. You know all these. And I would say, especially in the IT chain, uh, a good example at the moment is GS1. So, measures for fundamental changes. Uh, I think we should, as Fred does in China, integrate traditional, organic and alternative agriculture production into one supply chain. Um, especially in the mega cities, we will have to reduce distances for deliveries. We, ha we will have to integrate traditional uh, ways and new ways. So examples for alternative production are vertical farming, agri hoods, aquaponics, robot run farms, which nobody wants to hear, uh, floating dairy farms, sustainable livestock feeds we talked about yesterday evening. That means we go one step back in, into the supply chain, into feeding. One example here is the Black Soldier Fly project for fish and for pork. So this is the last page. Um, I think the possibility to combine all these measures could be um, to set up regional food hubs in these fragmented markets uh, to make a bridge between agriculture and the out-of-home consumption. A important question that could be discussed here is who takes the responsibility for that and who pays costs for implementation and uh, is that the country state where we live, it, is that the uh, EU state are that uh, NGOs, philanthropists, or even the private economy, where I see a conflict of interest. Uh, the most thing, uh, important thing is to be completely independent. So 
that was it. Thank you very much.